Today is February 6, 2024. My name is Bobby Goodman, and I'm interviewing Bert Fischel. Bert, thank you for taking the time being with us today. Okay. So, Bert, um, I want to get a little bit of background. Tell us a little ba- uh, about your background, where and when you were born. Um, tell us a little bit about your family, all those kinds of things. Okay, so let me tell you that my Jewish values are rooted deep in the deep south, in a time and a place when cotton was king, when many Jews lived on plantations and where they still decorate the sukkah with stalks of cotton. I was born and raised in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Our temple was one of the founding members of the Union of American Hebrew Congregations. Our rabbis, Dr. Stanley Braub, came to Temple Emanuel from Dallas. He had been the Temple Emanuel's first assistant rabbi, mentored by Rabbi, rabbi David Lifkowitz. A dynamic liberal rabbi opened his eyes and warmed our hearts. His time in Vicksburg inspired us for years to come. My American Jewish heritage extended back three generations. My mother's grandparents and my father's grandparents had immigrated to this country from Alsace through the Port of New Orleans in 1850. And all branches have lived in the Deep South for almost half of the 370 years of Jews in America. My great-grandfather fought in the Civil War. He named his son after his general, Albert Sidney Johnson, a legendary leader in both the Civil War and the War for Texas Independence. Then my grandfather, Albert Sidney Fischel, named my father Albert Lewis, and I became Albert Lewis Fischel, Jr. If you were surprised I was named after a living relative, that was more the rule than the exception in the Jewish South. <laughs> I truly lived the Southern Jewish experience, which meant reformed Jews with an emphasis on reform. Of Mississippi's 14 Jewish congregations, only two were not classic reform. This meant fitting into the contemporary America, not standing out with old world language or attire. No one wore a yarmulke. We prayed primarily in English, We didn't give babies Hebrew names. By contrast, I I was named after a Civil War general. We resisted Zionism because we were told it meant all Jews should move to Israel. And we certainly intended to stay in America. I was confirmed, but reformed congregations I knew did not allow a bar mitzvah. I'll never forget the wedding when a member of our congregation married a conservative Jew and they broke the glass. No one in my temple had ever heard of such a custom. When they heard the breaking glass, they thought our old temple building was falling down (laughs) and some jumped up to flee the danger. The, nothing impacted my Jewish values more than temple youth groups. I was the only Jew my age in Vicksburg, so I connected with a vibrant Jewish community of Jewish teens throughout SOFTI, Southern Federation of Temple Youth. I became a SOFTI officer and was sent to the Nifty National Leadership Camp in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Through Temple Youth, I connected with different kinds of Jewish music, guitar, with different prayers and teachings, and with lifelong friends. I continue to see my salty friends through the Institute of Southern Jewish Life. I I was on their board for over 10 years. This remarkable organization is preserving and documenting the legacy and culture and practice of Judaism in the South. Although many people like me have left our small southern towns, We can't turn our backs on the historic Jewish buildings, artifacts, and customs, and cemeteries. And to keep Judaism alive for the remaining families and communities, this organization 
provides traveling rabbis, educators, and Jewish cultural programs. During the 50, during the 60 years my wife Myra and I lived in Dallas, my Jewish perspective has broadened. I'm proud that I embraced many new Jewish customs thanks to the outstanding clergy, leaders, lay leaders and friends at Temple Emmanuel, especially thanks to my children and grandchildren. I'm proud that my son became a bar mitzvah here and that my daughter was married under the chuppah and her husband even broke a glass on the beam. I certainly support Israel even more so since my son met his future wife on a Federation singles trip to Israel. As for the music, when I saw my grandson's enthusiasm singing Hebrew lyrics led by a cantor in the California temple, how can I not appreciate this type of service? Twenty years ago, I returned to Vicksburg for the 160th anniversary of the congregation there. I'll never forget the gathering in the beautiful Jewish cemetery, which is now part of the Vicksburg National Military Park. Hmm. In a moving ceremony, a trumpet played taps. Then we heard the trumpet play the notes of the prayer, made the words of my mouth, the meditations of our heart. Then from over the hill floated the notes of another revered musical standard. As we assembled in this modern age in that historic Jewish cemetery, I heard the trumpet slowly playing Dixie, and the words hardly entered my mind, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times there are not forgotten. So what else can I talk about? Well, I'll tell you, that's you have a very rich background in, in Judaism from the South. Let me ask you a couple of questions about yeah. uh, where you grew up and really more, let's talk a little bit about your family. Yeah. Um, so what, like, what did your parents do for a living? My father owned a, uh, owned a recreation build, building uh, that had pool tables, lunch counter, uh, domino tables, uh, punch boards to to a chance game, and uh, and it was a very successful business during World War II. And then he became a New York Stock Exchange stockbroker and had a branch office of a New Orleans investment firm. And, and my mother was a amazing volunteer. She was named the, an outstanding volunteer for the state. And, but she was a, a really different person. She loved children. And so she dressed up like Mother Goose <laughs> for the <laughs> Halloween party and was so successful that she, they made films of her for PBS that was shown nationally of her playing Mother Goose and, and t t talking to kids. So it was a little embarrassing for me, but it was she. She was loved by everyone. Yeah, that sounds that's awesome. What about siblings? Did you have siblings? I had one sister, my sister Carol, who's married and lives in Atlanta, and and she has two children. And and then my my wife and I had a son and a daughter. Uh, my son and family live in. Seattle and my daughter and family live in Northern California. Oh, very nice. Nice places and, and to visit. They each have two children. So how, how did you end up in Dallas? How did you get here? Well, the small town of Vicksburg was a great place to grow up, but not a great place for me to be for a career. And I decided in about the sixth grade that I wanted to be a journalist an advertising person. And so I volunteered and was editor of the school paper, volunteered for every kind of writing assignment, and then chose the University of Missouri School of Journalism, mm -hmm. which was considered the, the top journalism school, oldest journalism school west of the Mississippi. And 
after graduating, I had to go into the Army for the six months. And then I had a choice of jobs, either to be an assistant in an ad agency in New York or an, an organization in, near Austin in Georgetown uh, had an opening for a head of communications. And I thought that sounded like much more fun and more responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for two years. And then I told the placement director at the journalism school that I was in no hurry to make a change, but I was already at the top of my profession in that, in that investment company where I was working and to keep an eye out. The next day I got a call from Texas Instruments that they needed a head of communications. And so my wife and I had just gotten married and several months after our marriage, we moved to Dallas, first working for Texas Instruments and then working for the, the Tracy Lock Advertising, which at that time was one of the biggest agencies around. And a couple of years there, my supervisor started his own agency. I went there a couple of years and then started my own agency with a partner. And our advertising agency was named Pope Joy and Fischl Advertising. And it was in business for 30 years. Uh, it became one of the largest agencies in the Southwest with national and international accounts. And it was a great profession and, and good people. And we were originally acquired by J. Walter Thompson Advertising, which is perhaps one of the oldest and best known agencies. All right, so uh, just to put some context of when you got here. So you got married and came here. What, what year were you married? Married in, uh, 60 years ago, that, that would be uh, 62. Right. And uh, this will be our 60th anniversary. Actually, 62 or 64? Uh, no, this will, no, so we were married in 64, that's right. I, I got you. So this is 60th anniversary. I got it. Yeah. So, so your childhood in Mississippi. Yeah. So um, what did... What did, I know I heard you say a little bit about you did some work there and took on this little job or that job. What did you do for fun there? What was, what, what was a, a young man growing up in the South with Jewish heritage, what they, what they do for fun? Well, we, the, the Vicksburg had a, a wonderful building called the BB Club for B'nai B'rith. And it was... But Vicksburg had a pretty sizable Jewish community for a small town. It was about 240 families. And, uh, and the BB Club was this great recreation place that had fabulous dances. And there was a band called the Red Tops. Hmm. And we had dances with the Red Tops and and the Red Tops traveled around the South, and, and but their home base was Vicksburg. And Vicksburg was on the river, and there was riverboat gambling, and hmm. it was, in the park, we had the, the river on one side of the town, and the national park on the, surrounded us on the other sides of the city. And it was a beautiful place with hills and valleys and green places and great monuments. And we would camp out and we would party and and it was and, and I worked part I worked as a at the at the Vicksburg City newspaper as an intern and great experience there. And it was, I was involved in just about everything. It was so much fun. Sounds fun. Well, you said uh, about 200 families. Yeah. So did, um, which seems like a lot of families in a small town. Yeah, it's, it's now, 
I think six Jewish people left there. Oh, really? So when you were growing up, did you, uh, like, it's unfortunate today how much anti-Semitism is felt all over the country, but in the South, did you, did you were you... So I never, I never experienced anti-Semitism the whole time I was growing up. And, and that started breaking out just as I went to college was when they had the bombing of the Birmingham Temple, the, mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a bombing in Jackson, Mississippi Temple. There was, uh, there, there was some bad experiences, and, but it, it, it didn't affect me at that time. And it, and it still hasn't affected me except being so concerned about how it's affecting everybody else now. Right. So a little bit about uh, your Jewish affiliation in your childhood, and then we'll get yeah. more present. But So you belong to a temple or a synagogue yeah, there, um, and you celebrated all the Jewish holidays. And, yes. Um, you, did you say it was B'nai B'rith, that the, the BB was a part yeah, of B'nai B'rith? B'nai B'rith. There were a lot of, a lot of the... Uh, organizations like uh, the Masonic Lodge and different kind of organizations were pretty uh, prevalent at that time. And so the Jewish community had their own organization and had built this fabulous building called the, the BB Club mm -hmm. by, by Neighbor Rith. And they had a big dance hall, a stage, they had a swimming pool in the basement. Uh, it, it's just a, a fabulous place. So now we fast forward a little bit. You went to uh, uh, Missouri, and then you end up in Georgetown, and then back into Dallas and yeah. uh, in the Dallas area, and have lived here ever since. Um, your a little bit of your affiliation here in Dallas. Uh, tell us like where you belong. How, how were you involved? So. I got involved in the American Jewish Committee, and uh, it, it was an organization at that time that had meetings in people's homes, and I got to meet a lot of people that way. And I uh, and I, I, sh I should mention that when we first moved here, I thought that. Temple Emmanuel would be too big for me. Mm -hmm. And so we joined Temple Shalom when it was just starting out, meeting in a church. Mm -hmm. And we were there for a couple of years and our first child was named there. But then I really liked, went to the services and liked the music and Temple Emmanuel better, so we changed to Temple Emmanuel, still thinking it was too busy for, big for me. Never would, and I, Started out volunteering to help with the youth group program and served on just about every kind of committee and didn't really hmm. imagine that I would eventually become president of Temple Emmanuel. But it was a great experience and uh, still still just treasure it. Still a member of Temple Emmanuel? Oh, Man? absolutely. Yeah. Um. And so, so I mentioned the American Jewish Committee, and uh, that, that those two organizations, the main ones, Temple Emanuel and American Jewish Committee. That's awesome. Tell me a little bit about your family life. I know uh, you might you said you had two children, a uh, yes. uh, son and a daughter. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, my son graduated from the University of Texas just about the time that the internet was just becoming into being. And uh, he uh, started out with a job on campus selling IBM computers on campus, and then was hired by, to work for IBM selling computers. And then he sort of specialized in search business, uh, doing searches on the computer and moved to a number of different companies uh, and 
then eventually was hired by Amazon to, to, go, to, to go to Seattle, and then hired by Microsoft. And recently, when Microsoft invested big in artificial intelligence, my son is head of marketing for artificial intelligence for, Amazon, for Microsoft. And it's a fabulous, fascinating opportunity. My, uh, and they have two children, a uh, son, Max, who is just out of high school, and a daughter, uh, Sophie, who is just in college in Los Angeles. Then in, my daughter married a guy who grew up in Northern California in Atherton, and went to uh, Vanderbilt, and my, he and my wife met from being at Vanderbilt, got married, uh, he worked in investment, then he went to, dark, to uh, Penn Wharton School, and worked in New York for a couple of years, and then went back to California, where he has made a very successful career working for a New York investment company. And my daughter is in public relations, uh, working with her own, on her own, primarily for Stanford University. Wow. Pretty, pretty proud of those children, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. Um, i got to ask this question. So what is your grandfather name? What, are they, what did your grandchildren call you? Uh, Papa. Uh -huh. and so, and my my wife they call Mia. Uh, I I used Mia as a affectionate term for her, and they picked that up. That's the, that's her grandmother name. That's great. Um, so since you've been sixty years in Dallas, yeah. Um, how was, uh, how was Dallas, how is Dallas back then different than your home, Mississippi, uh, and, and how, and tell us some of the changes you've seen from the time you got to Dallas to what you see today. Well, when we moved to Dallas, it seemed big, but after three years, all of a sudden, everywhere I went, I saw people I knew and it felt like a small town again. Mm -hmm. And it really was much smaller than it is now. And, uh, and I'm fascinated and proud of the growth of Dallas, but I'm sort of overwhelmed with how big it has become in population and land spread, and the, the, the Metroplex is, is just astonishing. And, and, and we love it here. We, we considered moving where our children were, but our friends are here, and we're comfortable here, and, and they come to visit us often, so we're here to stay. Well, it sounds like well, you, Dallas really you made a home for yourself here. Um, let me ask you, um, role models. Who were your role models? You know, it sounds crazy, but my children are my role models. <laughs> and I love that. I, I love that. I'm, I'm so proud of them. And I think that they have achieved things that I couldn't achieve. And, uh, and I couldn't be more proud of them. So the, they're the, my role models. Well, that's awesome. I, that was actually my next question, who you're most proud of, but you answered it so beautifully. Yeah. Um, so, Bert, is there anything that you would want to add that I didn't ask uh, that you'd want to make part of, of this interview? At, at this time, I think I've covered the highlights. Uh, I, I, I should mention that, I think I mentioned the, the Institute of Southern Jewish Living, and I was part of the founding group there. And it has grown 
they have educators, they have traveling rabbis, and they have opened a museum in New Orleans uh, that is near the World War II Museum, and it is just astonishing now. And so really proud that I was part of that. That's wonderful. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time today, sharing your story uh, with us, uh, and uh, so glad that you found your way to, to Dallas uh, back thank then. You. I know you've made a, 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 done some wonderful things in Dallas, and we're proud to have you as a, I'm a Dallasite, so we're proud right. to have you here. Well, thank you so much. <laughs>